Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, you want me to react to Merciful Servant yet again, this time with the minor signs of the last day. I'm pretty well versed when it comes down to Christian eschatology, the revelations, the descriptions of the end of days. However, when it comes down to Islamic eschatology, I don't know too much. Therefore, I'm very excited to watch today's video. Let's have a look. They're editing the though. Last day. Things that the Prophet Muhammad said that would happen before the end of time. And of course, the first thing the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, the first thing that he said would be the first of the signs of the last day is his death. And the last day is soon upon us. And that's what the Prophet said then, 1,400 years ago. How close must it be now? Let's look at some of the things the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said in various narrations. First of all, the Prophet Muhammad mentioned that amongst the signs of the last day is that you would see the barefooted Bedouins compete with each other in building tall buildings. This is remarkable because I invite anybody to look and go and visit Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain. These are places where 60 years ago I remember when I was in Kenya and they were complaining how there was no more money coming from Saudi Arabia after 9-11 and so on and so forth. And they were saying, well, you know, 60 years ago, we used to send money to Saudi Arabia to help the orphans and the madrasas there. Now you will find the people who only 60 years ago were barefooted Bedouins competing with each other in who can build the absolutely accurate, absolutely spot on. We all know that in the Emirates, in Dubai, they are competing to build the highest buildings. Matter of fact, they do have the highest buildings in the world. So therefore, to prophesy such a thing before they even had modern day buildings. If you look back into the times of the Prophet Muhammad in the Arabian Peninsula, you would have seen some huts, deserts, small housing, very, very primitive, of course, not even even remotely comparable with any modern day building. So therefore to have that vision, to have that prophetic ability to know that those Arabs will build the highest buildings is absolutely impressive. In fact, it said there's going to be six of the tallest buildings in the world really? in Dubai in the years to come. This is something the Prophet Muhammad was predicting 1,400 years ago. It is truly a sign of the last days. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, also mentioned that the mosques would become like palaces. And this is the case even though the Prophet وسلم, ordered simplicity in the houses of Allah, the fact is that they have become more and more fantastic and more and more money is being spent on these mosques with yes. domes and floors and golden domes and floors and everything to match with so much lavish chandeliers and sure. carpets like palaces. As you can the observe the same thing within Christianity or Buddhism. The Buddhists are the funniest to me personally because they're erecting 100 meter tall statues of the Buddha in gold, even though the Buddha was against idolatry. Ultimately, it is human nature. They want to amplify, they want to magnify, but in the house of God, it is of course about you humbling yourself in front of God. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, what happened? Also, the Prophet mentioned that trustworthiness would disappear so much so that a person would be able to say, I know a trustworthy person in such and such town. I ask sure. you yourself yeah. if maybe that is not the case today. Absolutely. Also, the Prophet mentioned that there loyalty, trust, all of those attributes are the greatest assets nowadays. Increase in killing. So the Prophet called it harj to the extent that the one who is 
being killed and the one who is killing, they don't even know. The one who is being killed doesn't know why he's being killed. The one who is killing doesn't know why he's doing the killing. True. I think this is this describing the condition <clears throat> of some cities today where kids are shooting people. The person has no idea. Sure, you could say it's those cities, but moreover, we see drone strikes and those poor people that are being bombarded by America, for example, they don't know why it is happening either. Why he was shot. In fact, people are being shot merely just to prove themselves or for any type of madness that you can imagine. Sure. Not even to mention the massacres of so many people that is taking place due to terrorism, whether it is the terrorism of countries or the terrorism of organizations or individuals. Yes. We shouldn't really make a difference. It's all terror. When women and children and innocents get killed, it's terror by the hands of whoever it is. People evil do not is know evil. why they're killing or why they're being killed. To such an extent that it is unimaginable, just as the Prophet Muhammad predicted 1,400 years ago. Also, the Prophet mentioned that there would be the increase in the use of riba, which means usury, interest, credit cards, mortgages, things like that. In fact, the, to the extent that no one would be able to escape the dust of it, everybody will be affected by it. And this is without doubt the truth of the world economy today. The whole world economy is affected and controlled by banks and the use of interest money, <sighs> even though in banks? Islam it is totally prohibited. <laughs> even though in Christianity, up until the 16th, 17th century, riba was forbidden in Christendom as well. Yes, yeah. absolutely. But if you look into Zionism, you will see that Christians nowadays are the biggest supporters of that as well. Today, it is something that controls the world economy to the extent that no one can escape it. Just as the Prophet Muhammad predicted 1,400 years ago. The Prophet also said that there will be in an increase in literacy. In fact, so many people will be able to read and write, but actually knowledge will decrease. <laughs> Isn't that a type of paradox? More people will read, and what do we end up reading? Most of us, we read rubbish. We read rubbish stuff. But we can Nothing. read. They're reading Instagram captions or TikTok captions. But knowledge, That's what they especially read. knowledge of the religion, despite the fact that more people can read, ignorance has become prevalent. And this is what the Prophet wasallam said, that religious knowledge would decrease, not by the books disappearing, that's very fascinating because especially in that environment, nobody would ever think about religion ever starting to disappear within society. This is where you can truly see that this is a prophecy and not just a wild guess. Not by, it's amazing. you know, knowledge being taken from the minds of the people. No, the knowledge in the sense of the books will be there, but the scholars so that only ignorant people will remain. <laughs> and people will ask them for religious verdicts and they will give it even though they are ignorant and they will misguide themselves and misguide others. Anyone acquainted with the Muslim world today will be familiar with this. And the Prophet mentioned that this is why I'm so skeptical in listening to scholars. Oftentimes I tell my audience that I read something in the Quran that I found beautiful and then the comments will correct me and tell me you should go to a scholar, you should see it through his lens. But ultimately if the Quran is God's revelation, why am I not able to appreciate those words? Ultimately God is never flawed, God is perfect, but humans will always be flawed. Within Christian Orthodoxy, we had a great church father. His name was Father Seraphim Rose, and he said that in the last days, the most wicked people will live in the churches. This is very equivalent to this prophecy here. Ultimately, men will always be corrupted. We can only put our trust within God. Well, the speakers will be many, and the scholars will be few. And this is what we can find exactly. There are many speakers, many thinkers, many intellectuals. Many people, alhamdulillah, giving dawah, maybe not enough people, but the scholars, they are so few. And this is a type of sign of the last day that the scholars will be taken away. And this is exactly what we find happening. Also, the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, said that there will be such an increase in musical instruments mm -hmm. and Muslims will make it lawful, even though it is forbidden, the use of musical instruments it has been forbidden by the Prophet, 
Some Muslims will make it lawful. And there are many people who are saying it's allowed, even though it is very clearly mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari, the most authentic collection of hadith. And this is mentioned here. This hadith where the Prophet predicted that the people will make it lawful, even though the Prophet made it unlawful and it's come true. Just as the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said. Also, he mentioned there will be an increase in sexual promiscuity. Even though Islam is a religion that teaches chastity, that a man and a woman should confine themselves to marriage, the Prophet said there will be an increase in sexual promiscuity. And I don't think anyone can deny that that is the state of the you? world today with highly sexualized images. And e the state of the world today is that chastity or sex after marriage is the absolute exception. If you tell people to wait until marriage, they will laugh in your face. They grow up with movies such as American Pie, where they tell you it's a cool thing to lose your virginity. And it's absolutely lame if you are a virgin. Look at another movie, The 40-Year-Old Virgin. How lame it is that this man still had no sex outside of marriage. It is absolutely normal. Normalized. Even traditional societies that normally had a good traditional moral values. It's gone. For example, like India. Even in India, for example, mm. promiscuity is becoming more and more common, hardly than it ever was before. Even in Muslim countries where the whole idea of sexual promiscuity is so against the teachings of Islam, it is unfortunately becoming more and more common. Sure. And the Prophet Muhammad said... It was absolutely unthinkable within Christian lands as well. If you go back 30, 40, 50 years, nobody would have ever thought about being promiscuous. That because of this, it diseases would appear that people had never heard of before. Isn't that the case? AIDS, for example, sure. diseases that people had never heard of before will arise <clears throat> due to sexual promiscuity and this has taken place just well, as not only promiscuity but degeneracy prophet muhammad predicted sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentioned that women will be naked although they are dressed the dress of some women to just go to any gym nowadays and check out gym shark leggings today which in all that means is nakedness it's very a... annoying by the way when i go to the gym i simply want to work out if i could go to a men only gym i would believe me i cannot stand when women do squats one meter in front of me with a leggings that is essentially just a second skin i'm really wondering how anybody in their right mind can believe this is the way to exit the house holes that are so tight they That's describe crazy. every shape of the body yeah. which this technology did not exist to make those type of clothes no. in the time of the prophet yet the prophet muhammad is describing how this nakedness amongst the women will become prevalent and also the prophet mentioned that there will be shouting in the mosques something that is prohibited in islam and it's something that i have witnessed myself so now nobody can call me out anymore and tell me that i was wrong about mohammed hoblos he was screaming and shouting man something that i have witnessed Come on. myself and also Be the honest. prophet said the worst and the most ignorant people will become the leaders and really i have to say if we look at some of the world leaders today even of some of the superpowers it seems as if what the prophet said about the worst and most ignorant people becoming leaders seems to have taken place exactly as the Prophet Muhammad said. Also, he mentioned that a man will obey his wife and disobey his mother, something <laughs> really contrary to the teachings of Islam. He will rather listen to his friends than listen to his father. And this yeah. is something that we have find happening in the Muslim world, even though- The woman has become the head of the household and this is why the West is in such a mess. So against the teachings of Islam, Men will wear gold It's essentially and the Garden Eden all over again when Adam listened to Eve rather than to God. And they will make it lawful, even though the Prophet has made it unlawful. People will abandon the religion of Islam for a small worldly gain. And keeping onto the religion will be whole, like holding two hot coals. Sure. I am mentioning all of these things. And there are many, many more things that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned. But these are some of the small signs concerning... I have to say they're pretty big already. The or events that will take signs. place before the last day. And as we can see, these things that I have gone through almost without exception, they have come true.
true in a way that is so, so clear and so, so obvious and so, so apparent. All right, that's it. this is it for today's video. Absolutely amazing. Very, very interesting to hear all of those revelations. I heard maybe of two or three or so, but not about all of them. Mind you, those are just the minor signs. So pretty soon I'm going to react to the major signs of the end times as well. I'm really, really curious to find out more about this subject. Now, hearing all of this, the prophet Hood of Muhammad seems so much more likely, of course, because those predictions are spot on. Pretty much everything that has been described is taking place right now, which is very, very fascinating to me personally, because if you look into the Christian eschatology, it is as well pointing towards exactly those times right now. Jesus said about the last day, only the Father knows. However, by seeing all of those signs unfolding, we cannot help as believers but assume that we are finding ourselves in the last days or at least at the beginning of those last days indeed. Anyways, this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel further, all the links are in the description box below. As always, let me know as well which videos I should react to if you want me to continue with this work. And now, as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.